Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, yeah, we're here to talk about uh, our omni-channel uh, contact centre, uh, why, why we went about building it, and uh, a little bit, but not too much, on how we did it, and Mike's going to take us through that shortly. Uh, but first of all, just, just carrying on from this morning with Jeff, uh, a little bit more about our business. So we're, we're disrupting how people buy uh, their next used car or on finance. Um, like, like I said this morning, it's traditionally people would buy um, finance, they would buy a car, but they would only think about how, how they would afford that. Would they be approved, what their monthly budget is at that point of sale at a dealership? Uh, quite simply, we flip that on its, onto its head um, and we get the customer approved online. We search um, a panel of 18 lenders. We help people with super prime credit, down to people who've had difficulties, credit difficulties in the past. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, credit difficulties in the past. So uh, pe people of, of every circumstance we can help. Uh, once they're approved, we allocate to an agent. Um, and that agent is there to take them through that process, which typically lasts around nine days uh, on average, from application to, to driving away with their car. Um, we, we are the largest online broker in the UK. Um, we get um, you know, nearly 600,000 visits per month. We get in the region of 70,000 applications for finance every month. Uh, and we, we approve around from our panel around 55% of those applications. Um, so pre-Twilio days. Uh, Pre-Twilio days was a, a painful period of my life. Um, it was an on-premise voice solution uh, over ISDN lines. Um, agents had soft phones, so they had their headset connected to USB to their desktop. Um, but it was very frustrating, you know, being a developer uh, and having a team, albeit a small team of developers, the business would often approach us and ask us to fix problems or improve scenarios or situations, but we just simply couldn't do it. Um, it we, 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 were, we were fighting blind almost. Um, so we, we couldn't maintain it, we couldn't fix bugs, we couldn't improve it, and, and the result of that was long wait times for customers, and we, and we knew this because we were getting emails, you know, maybe only 10 emails a day from customers complaining that they just couldn't get through to agents. Um, so long wait times, frustrated customers and frustrated developers, and a very frustrated uh, managing director as well. Um, and, and also there was, a, there was a data disconnect, so we've got lots of rich data, you know, from all our, all our CRM is built internally, so status moves from, we're tracking um, agents' capability to convert those customers from traffic sources, but there was just a huge disconnect to how we spoke to those customers, when we spoke to those customers, how long for, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what we wanted to do, we were exploring how we could improve that. How, how can we replace that system with a better system? And so you get the vendors in, um, they start pitching at you, don't worry, we can solve all those problems. If you can, great, let's, let's buy one of those systems. But there's always that niggle in the back of your mind that you're gonna end up in the same, the same situation as we were. Um, so we, we stumbled across uh, Twilio just by uh, one of our suppliers. We were, we were down at their offices um, and their agents were making calls from the browser. And my eyes lit up really. It was, that's, that's pretty interesting. So uh, we, we took that away. It was an unrelated meeting. Uh, but, but we came back to the office, we, we wrote some code, and we made our mobile phones ring. So we were like, oh, okay, that sounds pretty cool. So um, we carried on that journey. So um, with a few developers, within a couple of weeks, we had a proof of concepts. Within a few more weeks, we had a team of agents, around eight agents, uh, that were isolated away from the main core business, so we didn't want to disrupt the business too much in those early days. But fundamentally, we had eight agents on the phone over, to, over Twilio. We, we got comfortable with that fact, and then we, we carried on to roll out across the business. Um, and very quickly, we had 60 to 80 agents um, or, or through our Twilio platform uh, with the calls baked into the CRM. Um, I missed the slide, that's the slide. Um, but yeah, ultimately, the, the results, the net, the net effect of that, after having built our own, um, was um, no calls in the queue. So we, when we put this live, we were expecting that we're a really busy business. We weren't able to handle all those calls, we're getting lots of complaints. Um, but the reality of the situation was, we were just, we were just blind. Uh, when, we went, when we went live with Twilio, replacing voice, we, we had full transparency. We were queuing customers correctly, we were getting them through to the right teams, to the right agents, um, and, and it was just further realisation that, that it was really a crappy place that we were in before. We just didn't appreciate how bad it was. 
Um, my, my estimation is, you know, we're answering 100 more calls a day. That's simply, you know, one in 10 customers may bother to complain. Um, so there was a lot more calls answered. And we did observe a 12% uplift in conversion overall at that same period. We can't thank Twilio at all for that, or our, our engineering efforts, because um, we are a rapidly scaling company, so, so there, were, there were lots going on at the time, but nonetheless, we did see an uplift in that conversion from, from approved customer to, to a paid out, a funded loan. Um, at, at the same time of tackling that problem, if that wasn't big enough, we were also, as a business, trying to work out how we could truly scale. So the business, um, even today, a customer has to speak to us to, to transact with us. So we're looking at how we can get customers to self-fulfill, um, self-serve and, and, and self-fulfill. So it starts at searching for a car. So after you apply with us, you land in what we call the members area or my.carfinance 24-7 co UK. Um, searching for a car, you're then quoting yourself on that car. Um, and it's then at that point where maybe a customer is uncertain on how to proceed. We also ask the customer for things such as a copy of the driving license, um, maybe a utility bill and various other parts um, that, that we need to, to, to satisfy the lender. Um, when we were speaking to our customers and doing research, they actually really, really valued communicating with us. That's not necessarily by voice. So that is where we started to look. We had all this visibility of authenticated customers searching around for cars, doing the things I've just suggested, uploading driving licenses, etc. We wanted to empower the agent and the customer to connect uh, when they wanted, uh, by whatever means they wanted. So it's very much to why can't a customer communicate with our business or any business the same, the same way in which they would communicate with, with friends or family. Um, so, so we set about building our members area and putting more and more capability in there. And, and that led to our idea of Contact Centre 2. Um, but just for a bit of audience participation, um, I'm going to ask you a question now, and I want to see a show of hands, if you will. How many people today, this morning, have spoken with a family member or partner, whoever it may be, a close friend, by voice? OK. Good. Not too many. Um, so the next question is, how many, have spoke, how many have you spoken this morning, a family member, partner, close friend, by SMS or chat or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger? It worked. Great. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, so that, that's the whole point, right? Um, just allowing people to communicate on their own terms. Um, so we set about building Contact Centre too. So Mark's going to tell us a little bit on, on how we did that, and we're going to brave a demo shortly. Um, just, just while we're talking about that, um, you may want to go to the App Store, iOS or uh, Android, uh, and just, just search for Car Finance. Hopefully we're pretty close to the top, and download an app if you want to participate in the demo. Uh, but over to Mark. Thanks, John. Uh, okay, yeah, so to talk a little bit about how we did it. Um, this is a bit of a diagram about how our contact center customers and Twilio integrate together. Uh, I started off doing an actual architectural diagram, but there were just lines going everywhere, so I thought it simplified down to this. Um, so right at the bottom there we have our customers, our agents, and in between that we have Sync. So what we're really using Sync for is to give that like a presence with customers, so being able to see customers' activity, so not just um, are they online, are they in our members area, are they in the mobile app, really like what are they doing, are they searching for an Audi, um, they're looking at their finance section, so we can actually see exactly what's going on at that time, and that's really important our agents to initiate these like conversations with the customers. Uh, like, you know, really getting that, like, in in the conversation. Um, so moving up a bit, uh, we still have voice there. We always will have voice. Customers just like to ring up, uh, and that's the case. Uh, but then we opened up a few more channels. So we have our SMS, that's 2A SMS. We have chat, which is available in the app, which you may see because you're downloading it, uh, in our online members area. Um, so what that all is filtering down into is the task reader, and really what we're utilizing the task reader for is to get customers in contact with the best agent. And the best agent for us is their allocated agent. So we try to maintain like a one-to-one -one relationship between customer and agent. We feel that works really well for us, and um, people like having that one person that they talk to throughout their journey. Uh, unfortunately, that isn't always the case. Uh, people have holidays, you know, everyone doesn't work seven days a week. So the next thing it'll do is try and get them in contact with the most appropriate agent. So Ideally, that's going to be someone within their team. Failing that, um, it'll drop over to another department. So we've built all these rules into this, which really gives us the ability to put that customer in contact with the best person at that time. Um, and that's just all really feeding down into our agents on our contact center. 
Um, so off the back of this, we saw some results. Uh, I had like a big headline figure, but John kind of stole my thunder in the keynote. But I'll say it again anyway. Uh, we had a big reduction in initial contact time by 85%. So this is something that we thought was going to happen whenever we released this, but we didn't think it was going to be such a huge number. Um, but when you think about it, it's pretty obvious. We have customers that can now text us, chat us. Um, you know, agents can see that the customers are online. You don't know when someone's sitting on the other end of the phone, but if you can see that they're in your memory area right now, you can start chatting with them. Um, big byproduct of that was we had a 20% reduction in payout time. Uh, that's a really important figure for us because the shorter we can make that journey, we know that we have a higher chance of converting them customers. They don't get distracted. They don't go looking in our markets. They stick with us. Um, so that's a really good figure. Um, me and John were playing about with some stats the other day preparing for this presentation and we just happened to stumble upon this. This isn't something we had in our dashboards or anything. Uh, we noticed that 45% of the customers, so just under half of the customers we dealt with last month, uh, communicated via chat or SMS. So that really shows that people do want this, they want these features. Some people just don't like picking up the phone. Personally, I don't really like doing it. I always go on and check if a company has a chat feature. Um, so it's obvious that people want to talk to us in that way. Um, sort of interesting thing that we found, so as we were developing this and putting the APIs out there, but not putting the front-facing products on it for the agents to start seeing, um, we started seeing SMSs coming through, and we were really confused because we weren't doing any testing at the time. It turned out customers had been texting us for years, so we'd ring them on a number, and they'd be texting back to that number, trying to get in contact with us. So that was really encouraging to see before we'd even released the software. Um, so yeah, I mean, besides that, one of the really encouraging things that I've seen, I don't know, I'm sure many people have worked with like releasing internal software, and people don't tend to react to it very well. People don't like change. Uh, the big thing with this for me was that agents loved it. Uh, they really got on board with it. They had all these new channels to talk to their customers. At the end of the day, the more customers they can talk to, more commission, so they were pretty happy. Um, I picked out a couple of like success stories we had. Uh, so this first one is just like a bit of a chat conversation between a customer and agent. Uh, this application was alive for 45 days. Uh, so the customer applied 45 days ago. Usually by this point, we would have just canceled that up. We can't get in contact with the customer. The agent was trying to ring them every day, couldn't get through to them. Uh, but the agent sort of had the initiative. He could see that the customer was coming into the members area and they were searching for cars and they were saving cars. So we kept the app alive. Uh, we then released the SMS feature. The agent took a chance, texted the customer. The next day, he had the customer docked out. So that was a 45 day old application. We never would have converted before. And the agent was able to get it done over chat and SMS. Um, this one on the right. Uh, this is actually a review of one of our agents. So we uh, had a customer and they were a hospital worker um, and due to erratic hours and not really being able to answer a phone or anything, uh, we couldn't really get in contact with them. But the agent again, tax says, you know, just let me know an appropriate time I can ring you. So your lunchtime or whenever you finish or whatever. Uh, and they were able to get that conversation going and ended up doing the deal with the customer again. And this was just a really like shining review that the customer left for the agent. You know, he was setting up all the right times to talk to me. He wasn't bombarding me. Um, so it's been working like really, really well for us so far, and it's, uh, the agents have been loving it. Uh, so now on to the really scary part, which is going to be our demo. Um, I'm sure you all know how these go, but we'll try it anyway. I, I think this is now where I fill some time. Uh, uh, yeah. But if, if we've got some people who wish to uh, basically text your name to that number, uh, there's no profanity filter built in, so please, you know, Use your name, yeah. um, and, and the idea is we're uh, we're going to drop you into our uh, contact centre uh, where you will be able to have a conversation with Mark. Uh, yeah. If you download the native application, uh, you may be able to take uh, make use of some richer features, shall we say? So we should send you back an SMS with um, some login credentials. You don't have to log in. Ideally, please do. Uh, we can get some selfies or anything sent in. We have, can send pictures, whatever you want to do. Um, so we see some coming through here. Hopefully we get some 200 responses, that'd be nice. Um, well, there's a few popping through. But yeah, so you can feel free to text, you can still do 2 SMS, or you can log in, um, whichever you feel like doing. All right, 200, so that's all good. Uh, yeah, so I'll read the number out. Uh, it's 0161, that's a Manchester number. 850-8094. Uh, okay, right, we've got quite a few there now. So. So this is our like uh, custom in-house built uh, contact center. I'm just going to do a little refresh, trying to get the customers in. Hopefully the Wi-Fi plays with, plays ball. Uh, it's not usually this slow. It's actually quite performant. 
So, so this is the CRM that our agency. Um, <coughs> okay, so we can see. Oh, yeah, we got quite people, a lot. Oh, you're going to oh, break. People it. are trying to spam us. Um, okay, so we have. Right, so you can see here on the right-hand side, so this is a list of all the uh, customers that are allocated to this agent. Uh, you can see there the top two have little green dots. That means that then people are actually in the members area right now um, doing something. Uh, wow, there's a few more popping in now. Okay, so we have Ben that's in the audience, hopefully. Uh, hi, Ben. <laughs> uh, okay, so are you in the members area right now, yeah? Yes. Do you want to open up the chat feature and maybe send us a little chat? We can see Ben is currently viewing the homepage, so nothing exciting, but if he was looking at some cars, we could see that he's viewing an Audi A3 or something. So ideally, we should see a message coming through. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Ben. Are you enjoying the demo? Be kind. <laughs> Please do. Uh, so we've loads more here. Uh, let me see. We've got... Chris, uh, Chris in the audience. Yeah. Hiya, Chris. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, does anyone want to try and send us a picture? If you're in the membership, you could send us a picture. Maybe also on stage. But uh, might see some coming through. So you can see here. I mean, this is using task code here. So top, up in the top right hand side, I've got chat tasks coming through. So I can just start accepting these. And um, it should map me up to. There's mapping me up to a customer now, Andy K. I think he might be a mole. Uh, in the crowd. Uh, so we just constantly got in chat tasks coming through here. We don't usually let our agents take this many tasks at one time. I've got it configured to let me have a hundred because it would have been a pretty useless demo if we could only take one at a time. Uh, Andy page. sent something through. Hopefully it downloads. PNG. Oh, that's a selfie. Thanks for that, Andy. Uh, so, I mean, that feature Sending the files is actually a really important one for us. As John sort of mentioned earlier, we do a lot of documentation customers can send across. So now I can start sending it through this instead of via email or whatever they need to do. Um, but that was surprisingly successful. So uh, yeah, good. I'll leave it at that. Um, okay then, uh, just to sort of wrap up. I uh, just wanted to talk about some of the things that we're thinking about in the future, so that are on our roadmap, uh, especially in terms of working with Twilio. So uh, we have empowering agents to complete tasks. So what we want to start doing is, if any is going to that memory show, you'll see there's a car search. And uh, we want to start having the agents searching alongside cars with the customer. So you know, a customer saying, oh, I really like uh, you know, Audi A3s, agents start searching for them, pops them through to the customer. And uh, we can start quoting customers through the app. So they say, yeah, I want to take out it over five years. Yeah, let me just do that, pop it through to the customer be a really useful feature and we'll be using, like, fully using sync for that. Um, we want to start doing some sentiment analysis uh, on our inbound communications, so we may use some of the Twilio plugins that you may have seen. Uh, we may do some stuff ourselves, but it'll all be hooked through our contact center essentially. And then lastly, sort of customer satisfaction surveys. We've already started doing this in like a small scale, um, but we really want to start building that feature out, so sending out uh, surveys to customers after and getting some feedback about our agents and really improving on that experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty much us, so thank you very much, guys. Um, I can't really take questions here, but if you just want to chat to me outside, me or John, we'll take some questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.